Hello everyone, I am going to show you an app that I have finally uh, finished and I wanted to share it with you all. So this is uh, two parts, an introduction to the app that I made and also an instruction guide for those who have downloaded my app and want to know how the hell they use it. So this is called Image Tracker. Now it's a simple app that I've developed that helps me in my day to day business that allows me to manage, sort and share all my SVG images. Now this is only really relevant if you're in like the laser and engraving business or the vinyl cutting business. You will deal with SVGs all day, every day. And sometimes you need a way to remember where you stored images. Uh, previously, I had a 50 million Illustrator files with a whole bunch of designs like this. So Father's Day is coming up <clears throat> and customers will come in and go, oh, what Father's Day images do you have? And I'll bring up an app like this and I'll show people and then I forget where this folder where this file is stored or I create another file or I have a Mother's Day file a Father's Day file or I end up with files with a thousand images in it and it just slows everything down. So what I've done is I've made an app that catalogs and sorts it and you can just search for it. So let's say we want to search for unicorn you type uni and here's an emoji that's uh, got it that got it's got a, a tag called um, unicorn. Or you can say Father's Day images, and here's all the Father's Day images. But I haven't loaded everything in here yet. I'm still working on that. Um, but I've been stress testing it with 167 images, and it's lightning fast. So we're in early days. If we get to about a thousand and it starts chunking up, I'll start working on improving it. Um, so two questions. Uh, why do you need this? Well, you can add things. So for example, this heart image right here, you can click edit make it a heart, but you can also say that it's um, a shape, it's um, dogs, and also it's um, a lid design. So I might put that on the lid of a jar. Now that image is searchable under heart, it's searchable under dogs, it's searchable under lid, and any other uh, of the tags. Now, the cool thing is you found the image that you want. So customers come in and they said, what dogs do you have? And you go, oh, I've got this image. You can just click this button here in the middle, the little copy icon, you click copy, come to your design program and paste. That's it. It gets inserted into the design program. Now this should work with any design program, but please let me know if it doesn't. Um, as an editable SVG, it's not dropping it in with a background, it's not ruining it, it's not turning it into a PNG, it's staying as a vector file, ready to go. You can edit it, do whatever you want with it. <clears throat> How awesome is that? It's so easy, like you just click copy. Now if you want to delete it, you hit the delete button, and if you want to edit it, you click the edit. Um, now, how do you get apps in here? Well, how do you get images into the app? Well, there's two ways. You can either import them by selecting a file. I'm just going to go downloads, uh, and there you go, it searches and it only shows you SVGs. This app only works with SVGs. And then you just clearly click add. And then it automatically sets the name as the file name, dad.svg, it just becomes dad, but you can change it. You can go dad tools, and then you can add tags like father's day, um, tools, dad, family, I don't know, whatever else you want to add. And then you'll see it, it's over here. Um, and now the second way to add images to this is literally just, you're in a design file, you've got a design that you want to save. I think that one's already in there. Let's grab one that I think isn't. Husband, father, protect the hero. You've got it selected, you hit control C, or you can hit edit and copy, or whatever the copy function is in the app that you're using come to your images page, which is this page, and all you do is you click Control V or edit, paste, and it'll come up, it'll detect that you've pasted an SVG and you can name it. Now, since it's getting it from the clipboard, um, there, is no, uh, there is no file name pre-filled in, so you'll have to write something in. Um, and under tags, I'll just write Father's Day. Um, yeah, that's fine. And now it is in the image. And then if you want to go protector, there you go. You can click copy and you can paste it into a new file. Just so you know that it's working, I'm going to go edit copy on this one. So I've copied the best dad in the galaxy, but I'm going to come over to the app here. I'm going to click copy on this one and then come over to this new file and click paste. You can see that it copied it and pasted it. Um, that's it. That's completely like 
everything you need to know to use this app. Now, there's a couple of helpful functions that I've added to this app that I think makes things easier. Um, every time you click the copy button on an image, it actually updates the date stored on that image, the last used date. So you can actually sort your um, images by the last used. So that the top the top images will kind of be the ones that you use more frequently, but you can also uh, sort it by when they were created. This is the, the latest ones here. You can see the order that they were added in, or you can just sort them alphabetically like that. Um, secondly, uh, if you come to your home tab, it tells you how many images are stored in the database and you can see how many different directories all your images are stored at. So if I can make this clearer, when you click import, it, it doesn't do anything with that file. It leaves it where it is, but it stores a reference to where, where that file is and it just leaves it there. But what you can do is you can click move files to a single folder, image tracker images, and it just moved all those images into that folder. So now if you come here, you'll see that in the image tracker images folder, every single SVG has been moved here, which is so fantastic because sometimes you download so many images and they're all over your computer everywhere. Now you can just, um, yeah, now you can just um, move them all to a single folder. And now there's only one directory with stored images and you can no longer move it. Secondly, you can actually export all your data. So here we go, we've got I'm just going to click open and that's it. So what that actually did was that exported everything into a single zip file. Cool. So it exports it into a folder called uh, a file called export.zip. Now what's actually in that zip file is all your SVGs that you have. It hasn't removed them from the folder, but it has exported them all. Um, and then there is also, if we go kind, sort there'll be one json file and what that json file is is a reference to uh all the data that you had associated with those images so like all the names and all the tags so then therefore if you deleted everything in your library this is going to take a while so bear with me okay there we go so if you delete all the images you can see there's zero images you can go import data import your export file, and then boom, all your images are back, all your files are moved into this one main folder. Now this one main folder will be your user directory. That's all my application has like access to, to put images in. Um, it's usually under, on, if you're on Mac, it's under library application support image tracker images. Um, but if you're on Windows, it'll be like um, C users, Windows applications, something like that. I'll, I'll let you guys know. Um, but yeah, now all your images are back and they're still searchable. Heart, dad, tools. How cool is that? So that also means you can like, tag everything and then you can send that zip file to a friend um, and they can get your entire library searchable ready to go and that whole zip file was 441 kilobytes i've compressed it as much as i possibly can for 160 um svg images it's pretty good uh yeah so it's ten dollars once off um and you receive all future updates so you can buy the app uh from imagetracker.com ImageTracker.com. Um, I've thrown this website together. I've done my best to explain all the features, but hopefully the video that you just saw explains it better than any of this will ever do. Um, one last thing I'll explain is that there's no internet connection required in the app, which means um, it, everything's local stored on your computer. So if you, you install it on your two computers in your shop, then um, they won't be synced. They have their own little libraries. The reason for this is as soon as I add online support, then I need to add subscription fees to manage all the hosting costs. And if I stored the images online, then my, my, my hosting costs would just increase forever and ever. And who can afford that? No one needs more subscriptions. So just keep it all local. Um, if you like, you can export it and send it to another computer and they can import it. Let me know if there's anything you want me to do to help there. Uh, I'm working on a way to like keep track of which images are stored so that you can just export daily and store it on Google Drive and the other app can import it daily. I don't know. We will think of a, a solution for it and come up with it if you're running it on multiple computers. But basically, um, it's entirely offline, which keeps it fast, keeps it free.
Um, it is ten dollars AUD Australian dollar dollar bucks. So if you're in America, it's like five or six bucks. However, that conversion works. Um, the app has been fully code signed for Mac, um, which means it has been tested by Apple and it's not malicious in any way. But Windows, I haven't done yet. I'm working on it. The, the thing with Windows code signing is it's a minimum $228 a year subscription just to get it code signed, which is ridiculous when I can use it for free on my Windows computers in my shop and the Mac. All I got to do is click a box that says, yeah, yeah, I understand. It's unsigned. So if you guys are on Windows, please just like click, I understand, and you won't have any problems. The only thing stopping me is it stops me from being able to push out updates to your app automatically. So when a new version comes out, you'll have to download it from my website um, and replace the old, the old version. Um, I'm working on this. This is a feature, but hell, if enough people buy the app, I promise I'll just pay for the code signing and then I'll integrate some sort of auto update into the app. But at the moment, spending $228 on a hobby app that I use for my business that I'm just sharing to try to help people out, then it's, it's not worth it. But if you're on Mac, it's no problem. It's fully code signed. Um, let me know if you have any questions or queries, you can purchase it using PayPal on my site. Uh, any questions, let me know. Thanks so much.